is our mere shoes of the line. You know it's a big consolation Hard to my worried mind I left my baby Standing in the back door crying there in Tooting in South London and it just so happened that um, that was the middle of the what I call the, the Delta, South London Delta, which is Balham Streatham. Streatham was where Joan Kelly lived and also Dave Kelly. Balham was where Jeff Beck moved to and Epsom was where Eric Clapton lived because he's a snob, snobby area. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, I was fortunate I just um, was there and it all started around that time. Answering an ad in the Melody Maker that, that uh the groundhogs were put in. They were actually called the dollar bills in those days. And uh, they wanted a piano player. And two people answered the advert. And I can remember going round to some pub where they were um, rehearsing, you know, and they were, two people, two people answered the advert and I was the only one that showed up. The other guy just didn't turn up. So they said, well, guess you're the piano player. <laughs> Because the pop stuff was like, I knew this had to be something better. And I was walking into uh, the swing shop in Streatham, and there was all this blue stuff. And I can't, I can't, I, well, my brother started me off on uh, Alan Lomax um, albums with Fred McDowell. Thing like that. So I was lucky I was there at the right time. I actually started with Joanne Kelly. Um, she was one of the very earliest people I played with. And, uh, and the early Groundhogs, uh, not the first version that became commercially successful, but the one with the Crookshank brothers and that, 
And that was, those were interesting times. But you bear in mind this is the 60s, and if you were there, you really can't remember it at all. <laughs> and no doubt they will each tell you a different story. Uh, my recollection of meeting, first meeting Dave Kelly was at his house because his sister, Joanne, was a neighbour of mine. They lived within two or three minutes walk of my house in Streatham. We lived in what we used to call the Wandle Delta. Dave always wanted to be a guitar player. Um, and Joanne was, was very quickly extremely successful. You know, we lived near to uh, um, a jazz record shop, uh, which is now not very well known, but it was called The Swing Shop. And it was just, just by St. Leonard's Church in Stratton, run by a, a vibraphone player called Dave, Dave Carey's Swing Shop. And uh, you have to understand it was very difficult to buy blues records in, in England in, in the 50s. Dave Carey would get 20 records in every package that was sent over, and he hated rhythm and blues. He hated it. So he was oh, rubbish. And he put them out in a, a sort of bargain bin. It was in the front, front of the tiny, tiny little lock-up shop, but in the, there was a sort of bargain bin there, and he just threw all this stuff out, like two pounds. The lock in. And we would go through and pick out John Lee Hookers and Howie Morse and Smokey Hog and all, all this stuff on, on, on Crown. And I've still got them to this day. <laughs> I used to go to the Marquee and see Sewell Davis every Thursday. And um, I sort of got Pete Crutchland, who was playing bass, around a sort of suggestion that um, we should play blues. So we just became a blues band, and I looked for a name for the band, new band, and I found it on a hooker album. <laughs> John Mayer was backing him and uh, because the tour went so well they decided to put on another week's gigs at the end of the tour. But Mayer already had gigs booked for himself and um, so the guy that booked him, booked Hooker, knew that we liked him so he suggested that we back him for the last week. Because it was like um, two gigs a night, basically. Um, so it was like 36 dates and 52 gigs, you know, sort of weird, something like that. It's just, it was a lot of gigs, and um, it was great. It was, um, we got to know him very well, and he, after the first time we played with him, the first week, he decided he wanted to go with Buzz in the van, which he did. So he was sitting in his Commer van with us and all the gear. And we were transporting this legend and his poxy cover van. Working with Hooker, who he doesn't count to 12, you know, he mostly plays in the same key all the time. You would think it would be the most boring experience. And it was anything but. It was, the, it was one of the high points of my life to play with Hooker, because every night was different. Every, you never knew what was going to happen. Um, and it, it was just completely inspiring. And, and, and even though you know he's a guitar player, he kind of taught me a lot about the piano, a lot about rhythm, a lot about how to, how to fit in, and also how to accompany people. Because um, he was not easy to accompany, you know. But he was very tolerant. He was very tolerant. And, and if you didn't get it right the first time, that didn't matter. And the next time you would, and, and it would get better and better. So I have a lot to thank him for. You'll they tell me the graveyard, graveyard, graveyard. Here's a lot now. Dirty place. You don't know they tear me in the graveyard, graveyard, graveyard. There's a low down dirty place. They 
take my baby to the graveyard I may pack dirt on her face I follow the long black wagon, long black wagon Down to the graveyard What's that pack dirt on my baby's face? I follow the long black wagon, long black wagon, down to the graveyard. And I watch them pack them on my baby's face. It's a graveyard day. Why'd you want to take my baby away? I'm gonna bring some flowers, bring you some flowers, babe On every decoration day Gonna bring you some flowers, bring you some flowers, babe On every decoration day Gonna decorate your grave, babe On every decoration day Nobody, babe. All I had in the world have passed away. My baby gone. When he came over again, I don't, I don't know the situation, but um, things had changed. We couldn't back him. So he had another band backing him called Cops and Robbers. We're a good band. And uh, we went to see him once in Bromley Court Hotel, a gig. I noticed that the guitarist was playing in E flat. So I said to him, uh, How do you find playing with hooky? He says, It's great. He said, Trouble is, he plays in E flat. I said, No, he doesn't. Get his guitar and tune it up because he hasn't, he hasn't bothered you. He just sort of choose a string to whatever he thinks, and then choose the rest of it. He was always in tune, but it didn't matter what key he was in. Well, the first guy we played with, Jack Chipri, uh, we did a gig with him in Hundred Club, and he was great. He was, um, we played a few gigs with him. Um, we didn't tour as such, but uh, he, did, he did quote in one of the papers saying, we're the best band he played with, which is like, great to read that about yourself, you know. You really think you, you've done it. You, succeeded and also we done sort of bits and pieces with uh, Memphis Slim, Lil Walter, Jimmy Reed we did a whole tour with him that was fun. Well I think just hearing Fred Modell run me shoot shoot lines I thought that's fantastic it was so different uh, well because it was so different I was listening to the shadows yeah. and and the second thing, well, hearing Hooker and his style. And the main thing was hearing Hubert Sumlin playing the solo to Shake For Me, which I couldn't believe. I thought, while I was listening to The Shadows, this was going on over there, sort of 3,000 miles away. But uh, I didn't know about it. If I'd known that was going on, I know which way I'd be going sort of in the early 60s, you know, before 63. It's, it's, it's a technique. I mean, every, every music is a technique as well. And the, but the blues techniques are learnt, they're handed down. And um, that's the way they sort of use, they listen to, because the falsetto bits and the yodeling came from, they listen to um, the European stuff, the yodelers, to get that. You know, even Robert Johnson, the ooh bits, you know, it's, it was yodeling. And so they utilised what they could find from everywhere else. And that's what I've done. 
I sort of take a bit of what I like from somewhere, stick it all together. I take hooker style, I take Cuba something totally different, and a, a little bit of um, light and liquid and stuff like that. Mix it all together, and you come up with the style. Thank you.